This podcast is sponsored by Active Skin Repair, a skin health company helping people heal with natural, non-toxic, medical-grade ingredients. Active Skin Repair is something that is a staple now in our family health cabinet. My son is into mountain biking now. He's into ninja courses, and so he's getting a lot of scrapes and like burns when he like slides down the spider wall. So uh, anytime that happens, I just go to the cabinet. We take out the Active Skin Repair, spray it on, and he's feeling pretty pretty good. Uh, That's because active skin repair uses a molecule called hypochlorous acid. When applied to the skin, the molecule works by mimicking the natural immune response to cleanse, soothe irritation, reduce inflammation, and support healing. It's pretty cool. So visit www.activeskinrepair.com to learn more about active skin repair and to get 20% off your order, use code NOGUILT. That's activeskinrepair.com and to get 20% off your order, use code NOGUILT. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. Welcome to the No Guilt Mom podcast. I am your host, Joanne Crone, joined here by the lovely Brie Tucker. Why, hello, hello, everybody. How are you? Today, we have something really exciting for you. Uh, Instagram just announced a brand new feature called Teen Accounts, and Brie and I were invited to New York City for this launch, which we were, oh my gosh, when we got this email... I was honestly running back and forth in my house because I had so much energy and was so excited. And I know you were doing the same too, Brie. Oh my gosh. And it was a whirlwind event. We went out Monday morning, got to adjust to East Coast time, which is always fun when coming from the West Coast, trying to get yourself to sleep at seven o'clock at night because it's 10 o'clock on the East Coast. Well, I had a little trick for that, a little trick in our scheduling that oh I know know. girl got me up at 3 a.m 3 sorry let me be fair 3 45 a.m but still I purposefully requested a 6 a.m flight out of Phoenix because I mean that's the best way to adjust to east coast you have to get up where you are and then I thought you you did that just because that was you like every time we travel you take the 6 a.m oh yeah so so I can adjust the time okay it's always going to be like I always get a coffee the, the the day before just to prep for traveling with Joanne but it was oh my fun. Gosh. I got to experience so many new things on that trip. The Delta Sky Lounge. Oh, uh, yeah. Sky new Lounge. York City in a whirlwind. Like, we were right next to Madison Square Garden. I hadn't been to New York since I was 18. So it was fun. It was so much fun. And honestly, the event and Instagram and all the people, phenomenal. 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 We got to see the inside of Meta, at the offices there, which Fort I'm Knox, like, I'm telling everyone. AKA I'm like, Fort Knox. Go. <laughs> Go tell your kids a Fort Knox, yes, and go tell your kids to get a job at Meta because they will be fed for life. All the food they had there for employees, and it was like really good food. Like I saw people eating roasted chicken and veggies, and I was like, oh my gosh, I want to work here just for the food. I lo- I was going to say, like, I love how you're saying pick your career based on what they have available in the cafeteria. It is about quality of life. I will give you that for sure. That That is a big chunk because you're spending a lot of time at work. Let's just be honest. Let's just be yeah. honest. So while we were at the event, uh, which we are going to give you more details about at the end, so make sure that you stay until the end of the podcast, we got the chance to interview Naomi Glight. And Naomi Glight is head of product at Meta, formerly Facebook. She leads the team building products and tools that work across our technologies. And Naomi also oversees the growth team, integrity team, and the social impact team. She was one of the company's first employees and has worked on almost every major initiative in its history, including most recently the COVID-19 Information Center and the Voting Information Center. She was a founding member and leader of the growth team that helped the Facebook app grow from 1 million people when she joined 16 years ago to over 3 billion today. Naomi graduated from Stanford 
Harvard with a degree in science, technology, and society. She wrote her thesis on Facebook. She's now on the board of the primary school serving children and their families in East Palo Alto and originally from Brooklyn, New York. She now lives in New York City. And Naomi was such a joy to sit down with and talk with. And so she's going to give you all of the info on this new feature on Instagram, these teenage accounts. So we hope you enjoy our interview with Naomi. You want mom life to be easier. That's our goal too. Our mission is to raise more self-sufficient and independent kids, and we're going to have fun doing it. We're going to help you delegate and step back. Each episode, we'll tackle strategies for positive discipline, making our kids more responsible and making our lives better in the process. Welcome to the No Guilt Mom Podcast. So Naomi, you have nieces and nephews. How yes. old are they? So they are not old enough to use teen accounts. They are six and eight. So we have a few years to go. But obviously, this is something that I think every parent is thinking about, mm-hmm. even if their kids are not yet of age. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So I have an 11-year-old son uh-huh. and I have a 15-year-old daughter. Okay. And as soon as we we came out here, of course, I wasn't allowed to tell her, but I was able to talk to her a little bit this morning after the announcement was made. And she had a lot of questions actually about the teen accounts. She's 15. <laughs> She's 15. Okay. So- One of the things that teens do is that they have a public facing account where they have this public image they put forth and then they have a spam account, which lets them show like their true self and that they heavily moderate. So I was wondering like if any thought went into those accounts when you were creating the teen accounts for Instagram. Yes. So we definitely hear that teens are very creative. They have multiple accounts. Sometimes they don't put their accurate age on their account. And so backing up, our goal is to have everyone that's a teen and every account that they use in the protected settings of teen accounts. And there are a few things that we're going to do to make sure that happens. Mm -hmm. The first is if a teen tries to lie about their age, we're going to ask them to verify their age. So if they try to change their birthday or if they try to start a new account as an adult, then we will ask them to either take a video selfie or submit a government ID to try to prove their age. I love this. The teens are going to get carded. Uh, (laughs) When they complain, I'm going to be like, come on, trust me. When you are 21, you're going to be like... (laughs) So they have to take a video selfie and then provide some form of identification. I'm thinking school ID, that sort of thing. Well, not every teen has an ID. That's why we offer this video selfie tool. We were in a third party. They will take a video of your face and try to estimate based on your facial features the age. This is a alternative to teens that might not have a driver's license. Oh, awesome. I'm actually very familiar with this video selfie tool as I have used it to get back my account when it was hacked to yes. prove that it was me. <laughs> so how are, just explaining it from your point of view as head of product, how are these teen accounts going to be different than the accounts that teens have access to right now? So teen accounts is going to put all teens into the most safe, strictest, protective settings. Mm-hmm. And that is going to limit who can contact them, the content that they can see, and the time that they spend Instagram. The biggest difference here is that if you're under 16, you're going to need to get your parents' permission to change these settings. Mm -hmm. And so I really like this because I think it's going to incentivize teens like your Mm 15-year-old who may want to have a different setting around content or contact or have different time limits actually ask for parental supervision and involve you in their Instagram experience. It sounds like you guys have really thought through this plan. I'm curious, how long has this been in the works? What kind of a timeline was this project? So we've definitely been working on these features and tools that we give to teens and to their parents for a very long time, many years. But the specific teen accounts concept We've been working on for many months. Obviously, we've been talking to parents for as long as I can remember, and they have really been the input into the design of teen accounts. And I think part of why it has been really thoughtful is that we're really listening to parents because we think they know best. But they do know their teens very, very well. So with the ages involved, what age will the teen be that they're put into this private account? We'll be right back after a quick break. Here at No Guilt Mom and In Our Balance program, I am always talking about the importance of healthy habits. That is what gives you the energy to actually face all the stress you have as a mom. And one thing that I'm obsessed about is drinking enough 
water. Staying hydrated is so important. And that's why you've got to check out AquaTrue because its proprietary purification technology removes so many harmful contaminants, including PFAs, which are those forever chemicals, which can potentially lead to adverse health effects like cancer or liver toxicity. And the cool thing is, is the filters are long lasting. They last from six months to two years. AquaTrue comes with a 30 day money back guarantee and even makes a great gift. Today, our listeners receive 20% off any AquaTrue purifier. Just go to AquaTrue.com. That's A-Q-U-A-T-R-U.com and enter code NGM at checkout. That's 20% off any AquaTrue water purifier when you go to AquaTrue.com and use promo code NGM. Back to school season is officially here. And if you're struggling like I am trying to get everything done, I have one thing that you can cross off your list, and that is grocery shopping and meal planning because HelloFresh can provide each of those for you, and they handle most of the prep too. Their meals are absolutely delicious, and if you have kids complaining about what you're cooking for dinner, you can solve that family dinner dilemma because HelloFresh has a line of kid-friendly family options. We had this delicious corn quesadilla that my kids absolutely love. And Green Chef and Every Plate, they are now owned by HelloFresh. Now with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there is something for everyone. I have to mention for a limited time, kids eat free. They (gasps) eat free. So go to HelloFresh.com slash NGM kids to unlock this exclusive offer. One free kids meal per box for two months while your subscription is active. That's free kids meals just by going to hellofresh.com slash NGM kids. HelloFresh, it's America's number one meal kit. So with the ages involved, what age will the team be that they're put into this private account? Like what's the upper limit? So everyone under 18 will be put into teen accounts. 13 to 15 year olds will have to ask their parents for permission to change any settings. And we did that because we've heard that there's a difference between early teens, 13 to 15 year olds, and late teens or older teens, which are 16 and 17. And intuitively that makes sense. A 13 year old who's on Instagram for the first time, we don't allow, you know, kids that are under 13 onto mm-hmm. Instagram. Yeah. It's very different than a 17 year old who might be going to college. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Yeah. So the 13 and 15 year old will have to ask parent permission, but up to 18, they can really monitor their own settings and change those. Yep. So 16, 17 year olds, we think that they may require less parental involvement. Mm-hmm. They have been online, you know, they can navigate as they wish and have more autonomy. But If parents feel like they're 16 and 17 year old, they still want them to be under parent supervision, they have that option too. Got it. One question that we had about parents who live in two separate houses Mm -hmm. and parental supervision. How many parents can supervise a teen account? Does it have to be one or the other or can both have access? Right now, it's only one parent. We definitely understand everyone has different family structures. Not everyone has a parent. Sometimes you have a guardian. And so we are working on making sure teen accounts and parent supervision can support those different situations. As you said, every teen is different, but right now it's it's one parent or guardian. Okay. And then what has been like your early feedback from teens about the new app (laughs) and the layout? So we definitely talked to parents, but we also talked to teens. Teens, look. They love Instagram and Mm -hmm. what makes them love Instagram is that they come, they express themselves, they see content that they're interested in, they connect with friends. And so we want to give them more of that. I think they're going to be really excited about interests. Interest lets them pick topics that they can see, you know, on their explore page and in feed. We worked on the topics with parents and teens. They're fun things like animals, hobbies, art, cooking, making dinner, whatever it is. And then they can see an explore page about this. And my feedback so far has been that adults want it too. That, 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 that was my exact thing. I'm like nudging Joanne. Oh, yes. I thought Yes. I know. I felt, I felt seen here because there were other people that had like dogs all over their account. That was what's, your, what's your favorite IG account? Um, Hammy and Olivia. Oh, they are the best. Chonk Fest is coming on too. Oh, yes. Okay. It's fantastic. But that was going to be my next question was, when is that feature going to be available for everybody on Instagram where I can just type in dogs and then my for you page is nothing but dogs. Well, right now, teen accounts is 
is really focused on getting teens to see age-appropriate experience. That's why we're starting with teens. We think this feature would help. will help in addition to all of the restrictions around what kind of content they can see and making sure that it's you know intended for, you know, it's appropriate for that age for a teen. Mm-hmm. We want them to get first access. I, I'm very interested because like my teen actually shows me all the trends that's going on and she's the one who introduces me to new stuff. So having the teens have first access is like the <laughs> best thing there could be. Have you uh, gone into it all like what the schools do with these accounts? Because for instance, my daughter's in high school. Mm-hmm. Every class in the high school has their own IG account. Every club has their own IG account. And she goes and she follows all of these. So how will accounts like that be affected? So accounts, it depends on who is the actual owner of the account. Mm -hmm. If it is a school administrator, then that account won't need to be in a teen account. Mm -hmm. If it is, say, a class president, then that account will be. So it really is going to be tied to who's the primary owner of the account. And based on their age, whether or not it needs to be in a safe, protected teen account. So you mentioned before that a lot of teens were consulted on the development of this app. In terms of the experts, what kind of experts did you bring in when you were trying to decide like what features this app should have? Yeah, so a lot of the experts were actually in the room today. We had Yvonne Johnson. She was the head of PTA. She's been doing a lot of these what we call screen smart events with parents. Um, Dr. Elisa Presman, she was on a panel. She's a child psychologist. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. She's been on the podcast. She has? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, she's awesome. She's awesome. One of the things she said today, I think Ava was saying this to her, is I know that I'm going to have a lot of, you know, new conversations that are good with my teen tell me what to say. So a few people today have been asking for some tactical guidance on how to conduct some of these conversations with their kids. And I think someone like Dr. Pressman would really be the right person to help advise there. Oh yeah, definitely. Like we at No Good Mom, we're all about the O communication. We actually teach our parents like communication skills and how to really question and figure out what our kids want. And I think that's so important in terms of social media. One thing that I can see that these new features are going to do is that parents will figure out what to ask about. Mm -hmm. For example, the feature that lets parents see who their kids are DMing with. Yes. This was actually the (laughs) biggest sticking point for my daughter. She's like, well, these aren't going to affect me because we have these conversations at home. But she's like, my friends are not going to want their parents to see who they're talking with. Mm. So we need to find the right balance there. And we are going to show your parents who you're talking with, but we won't show Show your parents what you're saying. Yes. And so we need to find the right balance. (laughs) Well, I do think that that's actually, that was one of my favorite parts about this. Um, because early on, so my kids are 16 and 17. Okay. So between Older the two teens. of us, yeah. yeah. So between the two of us, we have the gamut that this is going yes. to be affecting yes. and different, different layers, we'll say. But when my daughter first started on social media, TikTok was an account that I was in charge of with her. So like we're, we're a divorced household too. So yes. like she really went Instagram. I'm like, okay, dad, you're on Instagram. I'll take TikTok. And I remember uh, because we were sharing that account at one point, I went in to see where she was at for messaging over. It had been like a day or two since I checked and there was some random person in their Mm -hmm. messaging, my 13 year old daughter. And I just remember being, I felt so violated, so upset and trying to have that conversation with her was hard because she didn't understand why it was wrong. She's like, what? You know, it's probably just another kid. And I'm like, oh no, clearly from what this person said, it is not. We'll be right back after a quick break. This episode is brought to you by Jira. Ever wonder how those big marketing campaigns that make headlines get delivered on time? It all starts with Jira, the only project management tool you need to plan and track work across any team. Every step of that campaign is organized in one place, from launching the campaign all the way back to designing ads and writing creative briefs. Get started on your next big marketing campaign idea today. Injira. eBay Motors is here for the ride. With over 122 million parts, you can make sure your number one ride or die stays running smoothly. Brake kits, LED headlights, bumpers, whatever your baby needs, eBay Motors has it. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time. Plus, at these prices, you're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. I felt so violated, so upset, and trying to have that conversation with her was hard because she didn't understand why it was wrong. She's like, what? You know, it's 
probably just another kid. And I'm like, oh no, clearly from what this person said, it is not. So I just remember that being one of those crap moments for me. Seeing this coming in for Instagram, it made me feel so much more secure and cozy about it. I was like, this, this would make me feel so much better because again, I might not be able to see what the conversation is, but at least knowing that that's a name that I don't know, it brings us into the conversation because that's something we're big about here at No Guilt Mom. You can't hide from screens, technology, social media. It's here. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. The best way to do that is through education and being a part of it. Yes. So Absolutely. I feel like this makes it a really good tool to continue to have that conversation. And honestly, that was the number one concern that we heard from parents is this unwanted contact. It's someone that you don't know or that's kind of sketchy potentially messaging your teen. And so, so much of teen accounts, in addition to the feature where you can see who your teen is messaging, is really geared around preventing that. Yeah. That's why teens are now required to have private accounts. That's why only people that teens follow or are already connected to will be able to message them. That's why only teen, only people they follow can tag and mention them. It really reduces the amount of interaction or contact that teens can get from people they don't want to talk to. Yeah. Now, teens could follow any public accounts that yes. they desire, right? Yeah. So if parents, they put on these parent supervisions and yes. maybe they're having a little bit of trouble with the app or like figuring it out, where do you recommend parents go to get more help with it? That's a great question. I think a lot of the experts that we've been talking to, especially in the development of teen accounts, mm -hmm. are now also experts in teen accounts. Mm -hmm. And so I hope that people like Dr. Pressman, Dr. Backey, we have several you know, child psychologists or people that work in socio-emotional health organizations like we had an Academy for Pediatrics representative on the panel earlier today will be able to provide some of that advice. Also, Instagram is putting a lot of guidance, mm -hmm. resources for teens that we're starting and parents um, that we're starting to roll out. One of our biggest goals with this launch is that parents understand what's going on. Yeah, right. Yeah. Parents and teens need to understand because it's such a big change. We're starting to roll it out, but it's going to take us probably two months to complete the transition of all the existing teens accounts into the new teen accounts. Mm -hmm. And so our goal is really comprehension here. But, which is actually kind of amazing because two months is a very, very fast time, mm -hmm. I would imagine, for like all of those accounts to be transferred over. Yeah. Tens of millions of accounts will be transferred. It is insane. So this is something that we ask everybody on the No Get Long yes. podcast. What is something coming up that you are looking forward to? Well, to our earlier question, I want an explore page of dogs. Uh, yes. <laughs> so I am looking forward to teens loving this dogs. We've got dogs. More dogs, more cats, <laughs> funny videos. And now I'm looking forward to seeing the Instagram account that you mentioned. <laughs> and that is that is Hammy and Olivia, which if you guys are listening, <laughs> love to have you on the podcast. Who, what kind of breed is Hammy and Olivia? Corgi. Oh. It's a corgi. I don't have a corgi, but I have decided that I was either a corgi in another life or I am destined to own a corgi. The, the cute little, little tiny short legs. Little, like, wonk, 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 wonk. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal this from yeah. the event today. What is your favorite Instagram account? So I'll give everybody a moment to think. <laughs> I already shared mine. Right now I'm obsessed with under the desk news. Yeah. It is run by, she runs it like a journalist, but she's political. And she comes in with an insight about what exactly is going on in politics, but like at a deeper level. And it's just amazing. Well, that inspired me. I don't know if you guys know Motion you knew. Mm -hmm. He runs a Instagram account called Moshe News, um, Moshe, M-O-S-H-E-H. -E and the reason that I like his account is that it is all stories. I can get all the news I need in a very Instagram friendly or Instagram first format. I can just click through the stories, but also I saw him at the event day. Nice. Yeah. It must be fun at these events to yeah. be like, you get to see all the influencers that you follow. Hello, exactly. That's spectacular. Well, thank you so much, Naomi, for talking with us and answering our questions. And we're, we're so excited excited for this app and look forward for everyone to be using it. Thank you guys. So I was really excited to tell my daughter who's 15 about these new teen accounts because I wanted her opinion so badly. She actually wrote a research project on things that social media companies can do better for kids. Like this was her project for her AP seminar class. And she got a five on that AP, by the way, just like other things. Like <laughs> my daughter's like co consistently impresses me. She wrote her research project on this and she said that they incorporated a lot of the things that she suggested they do as soon as she found out about like what the teenage accounts entail when I was That's talking with her last cool. night. Yeah. She followed up with a typical teenage response. 
Well, I only put those because I knew they would make parents happy and not teenagers happy. Like, well, okay, okay. Let's just be honest for one second. Most of the things that teenagers want that will make them happy are not things that are good for them in the long run. Yeah, they are not. So They're not. we get it. Let's just take school as a big one there. I mean, quite honestly, if you were to ask my daughter, she'd be like, you know, let's just abolish school and just let us like all just, you know, I just want to get paid for my time. I have I to volunteer my time at school is what she says. And <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you still need school. Sorry. You still so, have to go. I, di- so, I digress. Go on. Well, with these teen accounts, Instagram wanted to address the three main concerns of parents, which was who their teens are contacting, yep. the content that the teens see, and the amount of time that teens spend yep. on social and, yep. media. So the first part, the contact. I was talking with her about the DMs, like only people that teens follow can contact them, as well as if the teens are under 16 and have parent supervision on their account, their parents will be able to see exactly who they're talking with, but not necessarily Mm -hmm. what they're saying. And she's Mm -hmm. like, I know a lot of my friends are not going to be happy with this. They do not want their parents to see who they're talking to. So that was her first main concern. But let me play devil's advocate on that one. Oh, yeah, please. I mean, she's a teenager. Of course, we need to play devil's advocate with this Here's what I would say. (laughs) I would say to that. I hear you on that. I understand. And to some degree, that kind of feels like an invasion of privacy. However... It sounds to me like they did at least think forward to that one because they could have given parents complete access to all of your messages, but they did. Oh, yeah. All they gave them was access to see who you're talking to. So they did respect what, honestly, when you look at it, what is the bigger piece of the privacy pie there? Absolutely. That was actually one of the questions my husband had too. Like, you know, we just got back last night when we're recording this episode and we were talking about it this morning. And he's like, yeah, well, like they need to be a little less restrictive and like maybe like other apps, how they just see who they're talking to. And I'm like, that's exactly what they're doing. (laughs) They can't see all the details of the conversation. They they won't be able to see exactly what posts you're liking or what, unless they follow you. Go follow your teens, by the way. What posts they're like really is a good, is a a good rule of thumb. Yes. Follow follow your your teens teens on social media. Yeah. But I mean, parents won't be able to see that. They only get to see the high level stuff. Like what are the topics that they're most engaged with? Who are the people they're talking to? That sort of stuff. So it really does keep the teens privacy in check. Yeah. Um, Yeah. What surprised me about being in that room? And it was just because, first of all, I think that you and I, Brie, we're in a very unique position where we use social media and the apps every single day. Like <sighs> we do. Well, it's it's a work requirement. Right. I'm sighing because I'll be honest, yes. it kind of takes some of the fun out of it. What do you got to do it, it for work? Sometimes. Right? It's a work requirement. There's times so where I like, look at those apps and I'm like, oh God, I don't want to open it today. Like I do know the ins and outs of those apps really well because I'm yeah. very, very familiar yeah. with it. We also, our whole career is really about communicating with kids and talking with them and Mm -hmm. how to communicate with them. And so from my viewpoint, a lot of these settings that they put in place in Instagram, I was like, but why? Why don't, like, why do we need all these things? Not realizing, this is my introspective moment, how much experience I have in trying to, to talk with my daughter and knowing the things going on with her life and how to like facilitate that relationship better. Like it's a skill set that not everyone has because it's not really a pop, not popular, but it's not really a general thing that people are taught how to do. It's something that we know how to do because this is what we do. I think that's a really good point. And I think it was hammered in at the event that we were at because there was a couple of things that they had going on. But Mm -hmm. one of the things that we saw, they uh, had a panel in there of a multitude of different people from across the board. They had two Mm -hmm. teens that are part of the American Academy of Pediatrics Teen Advisory Advisory Council. Yeah. Yeah. Which is so cool. I know, right? And then they had like a pediatrician there. They had the head of the bully, like online bullying um, Mm -hmm. division at at Meta, I think was his role. Can I just say the parent, the dad of one of the teens on the advisory board was sitting next to you. Next to me in the audience. And he was so proud of his daughter. He was like filming her. Oh my gosh. It was so amazing to see that. It just made my heart feel so much. 
Right. And they also had the head of the PTA, the national PTA organization there. But the interesting part that I'm just going to kind of like that hammers in what you just said, both of the teens that were on the advisory panel that were there talking said that at least one of their parents did not really use social media or mm-hmm. all the apps on social media that the teens were interested in using. So that just took a back seat and didn't really do anything, didn't really know anything. And I think that that was an aha moment for me because I'm like, really? There's that many people that still don't aren't on social media? But then when I thought about it some more, like even my, well, both of my sisters, neither of them are all, I would say the big three, neither of them are on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. I'm leaving out the old bird app because I'm still pissed off at the person the old who runs bird the app, old bird app. It doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't exist So I, I, don't I don't even count that one anymore. But the no. point being is, yeah, so I, th- I think that there are a lot more people, like you just said, that aren't on the apps, don't know the ins and outs, and it's really hard to help guide and support your child when you have no idea what you're stepping into. Yeah. And I find there's a lot of fear out there because mm-hmm. like of the experience they don't have yet. Because you hear all these things in the media about how all this screen time is horrible for kids. And if you don't know it, if you don't know how to use it yourself, yeah, it's going to be a really, really scary thing. So I understand. And like these teen accounts that they put is a really, really great thing for parents because it I helps agree. make the whole process easier to manage. Um, another aside about the panel is the same teen who was talking about it. She's like, yeah, my mom doesn't really use it. And then my dad is in national security. And I like whip my head around and I'm like, what now? (laughs) She's like, so he's like super, let's be thoughtful of everything we put online kind of side. (laughs) It's amazing the people you just randomly run into. Again, he just had that beaming proud dad persona. I would have thought he was was an insurance agent or something. Yeah. So wonderful. He was so wonderful. <laughs> but yeah, so that the contact thing is really big. The content mm-hmm. thing is cool. One thing that we were saying over and over again is like teens get to now pick like the topics they follow on yes. Instagram. I, I want that. I don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> All the dogs. And it was funny because yeah. like I did ask her while we were interviewing Naomi, like, when's that going to be available for adults? Because I mean, they even acknowledged it. Everybody, when they said it at the event, everybody was like, mm. yeah, so, everybody was like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it would be really, really cool. So I also think an interesting point of this is that you and I are in a unique point as well, because we both have teens that are going to be affected by this. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is they're currently on Instagram and their Instagram account is going to change into this teen setup at different levels because we have different ages. And I think that also gives us a unique perspective of how teens are going to react to the changes. Yeah, I think it does. Because what's going to happen is that the teens are going to get a notification on their app that they've been switched to a teen account. And that's if they were honest about their age from the get-go. If they're not honest about their age, Instagram is working on some technology to look for little markers that show that, hey, this is a teen using this account. Looking at like, okay, what age of people are they following? Who are they interacting with? Those sort of things. And then transition those teens into a teen account, which Naomi said would happen in the next two months, which I think is incredibly fast for how many accounts they have to deal with. And me knowing exactly how many teens have lied about their age, there's a lot. They're going to be busy. They're going to be busy. It's so exciting. So exciting. We also got sent home a gift bag with us. I unpacked this (laughs) gift bag with my daughter. And I think she claimed about 90% of the items. In it was a hatch. As soon as I brought it out, my daughter gets this like, oh, I was excited. Like this once wide you look. It out. So oh tell everybody, God. what's a hatch? It's a, it's a ball. It, it simulates sunlight, right? Mm-hmm. It simulates sunlight. It has mm-hmm. nature sounds. It has, I, I really haven't gotten a chance because she's like, oh, that was on my Christmas list. And I'm knowing. Gonna- in mm-hmm. the back of my head that it's supposed to promote better sleep. I'm like, here you go. Very yeah, cute. She has a really hard time waking up for school. So she was because she's able to ignore her alarm. Like her alarm could be going off for an hour. She will not hear the thing. I cannot uh, do that. I can hit snooze thing. 16 times. I'm pretty talented mm-hmm. at that. There was a, a gift bag just for teens in there. And she we pulled out the phone charm and the phone charm's already on her phone. She thinks it's super cute. She really loves it. She's very excited about everything in there. So, so, um, so. 
So we would be like, okay, this is your 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 parting gift from Instagram. This is their, we're sorry that things are changing. But I do want to say, like we already talked about that. I think that these changes are good. So like my daughter yeah. is 16 and my son has an Instagram account, but I don't think he does anything with it. So it's like there, but not used. So he's out of the conversation. He's He's 17, but I'm not even going to talk about it. I'm just going to talk about the 16-year-old daughter. So she's going to be upset when it gets changed because they're going to go over to all the, like, really, it's going to go down to, like, the most secure settings on the account, which I think are brilliant. I think it's great. And I think for your teen that is starting out on Instagram, this is going to be fantastic. The only bumpy road are for those of us that already had a teen on Instagram that's going to have to change. And it's going to be for those older teens, like the, I think 14 and up are going to be a little little pissy, but But, parents have complete control. So if as a parent, you want to change it, you have the complete control. So like they might get a little mad about it, but I mean, it, again, it really is for the better. And it really does help. What I would say is if your teen gets upset and you like the changes, but your teen is fighting them, all that I'm going to ask is that you just sit down and you have the conversation about it. Mm -hmm. Let's just talk about it. I'm not saying that that you have to keep all these settings in place, but I'm also saying that I'm not going to rip them all off right away. Let's talk about why you want them not there. And I'm going to talk about why I do want them there. Mm -hmm. And going in without an agenda is so helpful. Like be really curious because your team might be doing some stuff on Instagram that's actually really cool. Like it's not bad at all. And they have very good reasoning. Yeah. Yeah. Come in and legitimately be curious legitimately listen and it'll be a much smoother process. In my case, since my daughter's 16, they're going to go in and make the changes, but she's going to be able to change them without me. But we're still going to have a conversation about this because I'm going to catch her before she goes to bed today. Uh, and we'll talk about it. Just but bring the gifts with you. Bring I the will, gifts right? with you. I'm just going to be like, all right, I'll talk. I'll get her upset. And then I'll be like, listen, I want you to know that Instagram bought this for you. Just for you. <laughs> and I even have the cute girls hit hit curbs pin I'm going to put in there. Be like, it's all. Look, see, I told them all about you and they customized this bag for you. She doesn't know any different. She doesn't listen to the podcast. Yeah. So but this yeah, is, so it's, this is it's good. a good thing Instagram is doing. Like, yeah. check it out. As soon as I get access to it, as soon as my daughter does, I will record a tutorial for everybody on how to work those parental permissions and how to make sure that all of those are locked down the way you want them locked down. Yeah. And you know what? Leave us a review. We would love to hear your feedback after listening to this episode. What do you think of the new changes for the uh, teen accounts on Instagram? What was your experience? What did your teen think of it? We would love to hear more about this. Definitely. And remember, the best mom is a happy mom. Take care of you. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for stopping by. Are you a parent in need of a laugh and a little escape? Look no further. Parenting is a Joke is the podcast you've been waiting for. Hey, I'm Ophira Eisenberg. I'm a stand-up comic and parent. And each week I chat with one of my top comedian pals who, just like you, are juggling careers, busy lives and schedules, and raising a family. You can expect candid stories, hilarious mishaps that happen on stage and at home, and just a lot of laughs. There's no expert advice here. Well, actually, sometimes a good idea does sneak its way in, but mostly just pure, relatable fun to remind you that we're all in this parenting adventure together. New episodes of Parenting is a Joke drop every Tuesday, so tune in, get ready to laugh, unwind, and maybe even feel a little bit better about your own parenting. Because sometimes that's exactly what your therapist, pediatrician, and bartender ordered. (laughs) Subscribe now on your favorite podcast platform. Hi there, I'm Andrea Owen, self-help author with 19 translations of my books, global keynote speaker, and life coach. My podcast, Make Some Noise, has been serving up self-help in a simple-to-digest way for the last decade. The topics brought in each episode are practical and easy to implement around topics such as working through fears that keep you stuck, different modalities of therapy, managing your negative self-talk, and more. We bring you guest experts, solo episodes, and I even coach listeners on the air around relatable struggles. I also do my best to weave my sense of humor into some heavy topics because let's face it, 
Life can be pretty hard and it's so much better when we can have some fun while walking through our challenges. Whether you're seasoned in personal development or just starting out, Make Some Noise podcast will help you become the best version of yourself, the person you're proud of when you look in the mirror and show up in your life. Simply search Make Some Noise with Andrea Owen wherever you listen to your podcasts.